heading into another election. So, who have you made I'm a decision sure about what, who you're going to support? I'm not sure how to answer that, that question, to be honest with you. Have you made a decision? I haven't. What do you think, see as the significance of African American men in this election Thank you everybody. for both of you? I see them identifying with Trump. Why do you say that? Because they got RICO charges. Verbal or life. With, as you've noted, with respect to Judge Marchand, I mean, I am, I am like now, you know, I felt like a man crush on him. <laughs> he is such a great judge that it's hard to see that the jurors wouldn't have the same impression. I mean, he's just, you just keep on thinking, if you looked in a dictionary for like judicial temperament, that's what you get. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about the Democrats and mainstream liberal media. All right, let me pause it right here. Welcome to Verbal on Life. My name is Noel. Here battling MS. And I want to go over a clip from the conservative, what's it called? The black conservative. Talking about how Trump just keeps winning over and over again. And the more and more they attack Trump, the more he wins. And we got to celebrate it. Now, I'm up to 10,160 subscribers. That's insane. So I want to give a quick shout out. This is your first up on the video. Make sure you give it a like so we can get the word out and get it to more and more people. But let's take a look. I don't know why I keep saying but. And the sheer overt hypocrisy when it comes to this idea that all of a sudden now you cannot question the criminal justice system, right? You can't question the courts. You can't question the judge, even though Democrats quite literally uh, rioted in the street. Liberals rioted in the streets over an unjust criminal justice system, okay? These people have went out of their way to try to undermine the sovereignty and integrity of the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court has issued ruling after ruling after ruling that they don't like. But now all of a sudden, when you have a Democrat activist judge Rashawn in New York City, who has donated to Democrats and anti-Trump initiatives. Also, you have Alvin Bragg, a woke prosecutor who campaigned on going after Trump. He's going to take Trump. So, like, they're breaking all the rules to go up against Trump. And nobody's saying anything. Like, nobody's calling time out. They're breaking the rules. Like, everything could work and does work against Trump. Like, they give it an okay. So crazy. Trump down with the help of the former number three guy at the Department of Justice with a overwhelmingly Democrat jury. What, in my opinion, is a clearly and obviously politically motivated witch hunt against the former president of the United States. You can't question the outcome. In fact, if you question the outcome, you are a dangerous person. You're a dangerous person. And MSNBC says you can't do that, right? You can't say that it was rigged. You can't do it. They don't like the result. And suddenly, first we went from, a, you know, the election was rigged. Now the trial is rigged. Um, I'm reminded of when Hillary Clinton said, you know, when he didn't get an Emmy, he was like, the Emmys are rigged. I mean, it is like if you lose, it's rigged. If you win, it's fair. Um, and so this is just the same um, leitmotif again and again. Yeah, but see, apparently when things aren't going in favor of Democrats and the mainstream liberal media, when it comes to Judge Aileen Cannon and her handling of the Jack Smith classified documents case, all of a sudden, no, 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 it's totally fine. It's totally OK to say that it's rigged, that the judge is politically motivated. She's a MAGA activist. OK, and this same propaganda to MSNBC sat quietly as his colleague essentially made that claim and then pushed back on it at all the curious case of eileen george when when people say that the fight is fixed this is the type of stuff that they are that they're talking right. about you have a woman here who michael she intentionally appears to be dragging her feet um and she's proving herself to be to to appear in my uh, opinion she's proven to be a maga activist in a black robe who's giving trump exact i'm getting tired of these people using maga maga activists like we're supposed to be scared like it's a terrorist group and it's all make America great again. Exactly what he wants, and that is unintentional delay. And some people will say, you know what, she's an inexperienced judge that she um, is up in this satellite facility up in Palm Beach County, right. that she's dealing with classified uh, documents and that requires, that requires special handling. And all of that may be- At the end of the day, it's all about the narrative. It's all about the narrative of convincing people that you are correct and that they are wrong. So stop listening to the people who are wrong. But it's not working anymore. People are aware.
be accurate. But at the end of the day, like she is ignoring settled law. She um, doesn't appear, appear to have an appreciation for the rules of criminal procedure. And I'll give you an example, Michael. Uh, next month, she is holding a day long hearing to determine whether or not uh, Jack Smith, the special counsel in this case, uh, has been constitutionally appointed. And as Andrew Weissman knows, that that case is already that's that's the <laughs> argument's already been decided. Right. And so, I mean, she she's a MAGA activist. Um, she has a, a, a MAGA slip underneath this black robe and her slip is showing. That's why that's what's really happening. <laughs> Andrew Weissman, she a MAGA activist in a black robe with a with a MAGA slip up under there. What? hypocrites the hell are they talking about mega activists they're really just flipping on them they got issues and trying to say that we got issues the republicans got issues yeah so i'm not i have nothing as catchy <laughs> as that. Um, but let's just take the um some of the things that she's done I, just so people understand she was reversed not once but twice by the 11th circuit for right. um ruling um not you know one time for uh, Trump and one time for the government. All of her rulings have been for Donald Trump. They've always been an, anything critical, unless unless she's really worried about getting re, um, sort of again reversed on appeal. She's been ruling for the former president um, in connection with an incredible. Not ruling for the former president, but just following the law. How about you read the law and follow it? Everybody else just seemed to be saying, okay, we're not gonna follow the law. When it comes to Trump, we're just going to bypass what we're supposed to be doing. Incredibly serious case involving this country's national security. Yeah. So you see that you heard that. OK, uh, this hack or MSNBC, Andrew Wiseman, when things are going his way, like in New York, George Munchon. Oh, he has a man crush on that guy. OK, his favorite judge ever. OK, because he is acting in favor of the liberal media and the Democrats against Trump, right? But when Judge Ayeen Cannon is acting in favor of Trump, which is what they say, they, they claim that, again, she, she's biased. Oh, well, you know, this is rigged and this is fixed and uh, she's a MAGA activist, right? This is what they say. This is what they say, okay? You, you see the hypocrisy is right in front of your face. When things are going their way, it's totally fair. When things aren't going their way, is fixed, which is something that he tried to say about Trump and conservatives and Republicans. But it seems to me that MSNBC and Democrats kind of do the same thing. But see, the mainstream liberal media, they're going to continue to have another meltdown over Judge Aileen Cannon and the fact that she is handling this case in a way that they don't like, a.k.a. she's not trying to rush the case. OK, she's not trying to do sloppy work, which is. I'm surprised the other judges, the Democratic judges are breaking the rules are making everything fast and speeding things up and just judging up against Trump instead of following the rules. And it's like, it almost feels like they could just break the rules and later reverse it. But after the election, when it's too late, when nobody cares. So that's kind of what it seems like they're doing. Doing everything wrong and then saying, oops, my bad. But too late. After the election, after the votes are counted, after nobody can do anything what was done out in New York in order to get Trump convicted, because the point is to have him convicted before the election to sway the outcome of the election. She's not allowing that. The Supreme Court also is not allowing that. Uh, the Georgia Appeals Court is not allowing that. Ain't it funny how that works? Ain't it funny how it works? The, the one trial that these people claim is so fair, right? You can't question it. It is the only one that is allowing fast tracking and denying all of Trump's attempts to have a fair trial, that's the only one that's that's totally fair, right? And you can't say that's rigged. But all the other ones, though, oh, it's rigged, right? <laughs> we don't like it. The Supreme Court is rigged. Judge Aileen Cannon is a MAGA activist. Again, it's just it's, it's hilarious how that works, right? So hilarious. But anyways, again, they're going to be mad. Again, they're going to be fuming because Judge Aileen Cannon has handed Trump another massive W, okay, at the expense of uh, Jack Smith, because if you guys remember, maybe just a week ago or so, Judge Aileen Cannon denied Jack Smith's attempt to gag Trump, right, to take away the president's freedom of speech, claiming that Trump was putting law enforcement in danger, right, because people had questions about uh, whether or not the FBI should have had the ability to use force 
when uh, raiding Mar-a-Lago, okay? People had questions about that. And then all of a sudden, Jack Smith said, well, law enforcement is in danger. He's putting lives in danger. Let's take away his freedom of speech, right? And Judge Eileen Cannon says, no, 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 you, you can't just try to issue a gag order without giving the president's team enough time to respond, <laughs> right? And mm -hmm. again, it may all of that is like election interference. How are you going to give a guy running for president a gag order or even send him to jail? Because that's another thing. I'm praying that they do send him to jail because I want to see how the people react to this, to this injustice of sending Donald Trump to jail. It will be a little bit chaotic, in my opinion, and I hope so. Israel Media had a meltdown over that. And they're going to have another meltdown because Judge Ali Cannon has agreed to President Trump's request for a hearing on whether Jack Smith's appointment as a special counsel in this classified documents case is legal. And, and here's the kicker. She's allowing third-party scholars to come in and to argue on behalf of the president of the United States to make... And it's crazy because it's not legal. And they had it at the, at the, at the White House in Congress. They talked about it. The fact that it's not legal, but yet they are doing it. So thank God that the judge is going to listen to the argument because how can you have anybody just suing the president? Make a case for Trump to make a case that Jack Smith should be removed, okay? And I want you guys to listen to the anti-Trump activists, right, uh, fume and see the over uh, Judge Cannon's most recent decision. Take a look. Federal Judge Eileen Cannon just issued a new paperless order inviting certain non-parties to participate in oral arguments before her court on June 21st, 2024, in connection with the Mar-a-Lago document case. These non-parties, she would like to have them argue about whether or not the special counsel, Jack Smith, was unlawfully appointed, and therefore whether Jack Smith uh, and the entire prosecution team should be removed and the case. Thank God that she's going to hear this because they keep mentioning that on the news, but nobody does anything. Finally, the judge is going to do something. Remove that guy. Dismissed. Donald Trump filed a motion to dismiss on the basis of the unlawful appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. This is the type of tinfoil style legal arguments that should have no place before a district court. It is as frivolous as can be. It would not even need a hearing date. It should just be rejected out of hand and frankly <laughs> sanctionable. But not only is Judge Eileen Cannon holding a hearing on this, she's asked for supplemental briefing and now she's invited non-parties to show up in court just like third parties to make oral arguments, uh, informal proceedings before the court, which is essentially entirely unprecedented. She's just making this up as she goes. Here's the paperless order so you can read it for yourself. It says paperless order granting motions for leave to participate in oral argument as to amicai curiae the representatives designated in the respective filings will be permitted to appear on behalf of Amakai Curie and present oral argument at the June 21, 2024 hearing on defendant Donald Trump. Yeah, finally somebody's speaking up. Why does it look so blurry? Can I fix the quality of this picture? Let me see. So, yeah, finally, somebody speaking up in favor of Trump. This makes no sense. Just a random lawyer taking Trump to court. Donald Trump's motion to dismiss the indictment based on the unlawful appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. Yeah. So you see that you heard that. OK, these people are fuming. OK, because apparently, apparently yeah. when it comes to Alvin Bragg, him taking what is a misdemeanor when it comes to falsifying business records and elevating that to a felony in order to get past the statute of limitations and to revive what was a dead. Well, he falsified business records in order to commit some federal campaign finance violation, even though, you know, and it was a kangaroo case because us regular Americans that got to deal with the justice system knows that there are times where it seems like kangaroo case. Like they're just trying to lock people up and now they're doing it to Trump.
insane. Somebody got to put a stop to this. So the DOJ already basically refused to go out the truck for that. Uh, we're going to try to charge him with a felony, with a felony, just so that we can say we, we got him. Um, yeah, that's totally legit, right? He's not just making things up as they go. Um, he's not just pulling things out of his ass, out of thin air. No, no, no. But Judge Ayn Cannon, though, allowing, allowing third parties to come in and to argue for Trump or against Trump. Because, again, this can benefit both sides. Okay, It can benefit Trump. It can be against Trump. Oh, well, she's just making things up. <laughs> right? This is totally unprecedented. We've never seen this before. Kind of like we never seen what Alvin Bragg did to Trump out in New York before. We've never seen uh, the jury instructions that were given by Judge Merchan that basically guaranteed that Trump would be convicted. Yeah, just like that. OK, but these people say, oh, that's totally fair. Right. Totally fair. N nothing to worry about. Not politically motivated. Again, it's amazing how this works. The hypocrisy is stunning. But again, what these people are really upset about is the fact that this is just going to further delay the classified documents case against Trump because uh, Judge Ayn Cannon has already kind of suspended it indefinitely. And now with these hearings uh, happening, uh, yeah, it's going to delay it even more. Right. And basically, this is probably not. I mean, at the end of the day. It really felt like all of this was just, yeah, to get Trump to go to court and not run for president in November. So this is going to go past November. So all of this is going to get dropped, in my opinion. They're going to say, oh, well, we were wrong. Let's just drop everything because it's over. Trump is going to be president now or never, in my opinion. But let's take a look. I going to happen before the election. And uh, these people are fuming, okay? Uh, they're fuming so much that... Over a thousand complaints were filed in a week, okay, to the point where the court uh, no longer is accepting orchestrated complaints about the judge, right? So they're essentially trying to send hate messages to the judge because she's not moving at the pace that they want her to move at. To me, I think this is hate and bigotry. This to me sounds like xenophobia, okay? It sounds like uh, sexism as well, too, because this is what they told us, okay? This is an immigrant Latino woman that has achieved the American dream. By coming over here and, you know, nice, an immigrant female judge breaking all the rules, but made it to America and is now siding with Trump. So actually, DEI should apply to her. And everybody should be just clapping it up that she is doing good. Hispanic. So getting an education and becoming a judge, a distinguished judge, right? But now all of a sudden they're tearing her down because she's not trying to fast track and rush this case against Trump. Again, sounds like hate and bigotry to me because, again, this woman was black. If she was black, what do you think the left would be saying? <laughs> right. If if the right was attacking her the same way that they're attacking Eileen Cannon. OK, they'd be boo hoo and cry, hate and bigotry all over the place. So that being said, we got to react to CNN, whose panel is also going to have a meltdown over this, despite the fact that these same people, the same network. We say, oh, no, you can't say that the New York trial was rigged. You can't question the judge, right? Okay. It's dangerous. Now, all of a sudden, again, they want to question uh, Judge Eileen Cannon because she doesn't agree with him. New developments in Donald Trump's classified documents case. Judge Eileen Cannon is expanding an upcoming hearing on the former president's request to declare Jack Smith's appointment as special counsel invalid. Trump's lawyers want Judge Cannon to throw out the case. Trump has attacked, of course, just about every judge he's encountered in his legal battles, except this one, Eileen Cannon, who he happened to appoint. The former president has frequently pra praised her in public, describing her as smart and highly respected. On Tuesday, Judge Cannon ruled a variety of political partisans and constitutional scholars who are not otherwise involved in the case can join the oral arguments in two weeks. Uh, Elliot Williams, how yeah. normal is this? Not normal at <laughs> all. Okay. Uh, there is literally no reason why the judge needs to have uh, additional folks come in at the oral argument. Now, it is a very common practice. The Supreme Court does it all the time to have parties, outside parties, called amicus uh, submitters, right, mm -hmm. to file briefs on the court that lay out their views and the judge can read them and help them in crafting her opinion. But she doesn't need to have this free for all open argument where multiple parties, no matter how great their scholarship has been, um, they don't need to be arguing. Check out the narrative. It's them against us. They're doing wrong by not following our agenda, by not doing what we want. Poor Eileen Cannon. Yo, she came to this country, became a judge, went to school. Clap it up.
in court. And this question. Wow. You hear this? You hear this from CNN? Oh, well, she doesn't need to have legal scholars. No matter how great their scholarship has been, she, she, she doesn't need to have them come in and argue in, in court in order to help form her opinion, a.k.a. she doesn't need more information, okay? Uh, we shouldn't have an open debate. This is what they're arguing on CNN. This is what they're openly saying. Open debate is bad, right? <laughs> it's bad. It's bad that she's allowing this. Again, this is pathetic. The hypocrisy is stunning. It's in your face. Uh, that they're raising here, this question of was Jack Smith appointed lawfully, it came up in the context of Robert Mueller. Hunter Biden has raised it, and it's lost every single time. So the idea that the question needs to be reopened now and litigated is just sort of silly. Well, I mean, the question I think throughout this case has been whether you know the unorthodox way Judge Cannon has yeah. approached this is a result of her her relative. And it's like when things don't go their way, it's silly or it's wrong. Even though the judge makes sense what she's doing, the ruling that she's taking makes total sense. This is crazy, man. Trump is going to win. And also, SCOTUS should say something about him going to jail July 11th. That's going to be funny. Um, but let's keep listening. I'm sidetracking. I do that a lot. An experience or some sort of bias toward uh, the defendant. And the upshot of all of it has been to delay the case repeatedly. Uh, there's been, you know, uh, multiple times over the course of this case where she's sort of indulged mo uh, motions from the defense or put things on the calendar, decided to consider things at length or, or just not sped up the case in a way that I think makes watchers of this case, particularly who are not so sympathetic to the defense, very uh, frustrated and exasperated because the end result of it all has been that this is not going to trial anytime soon. And I think. And it's crazy that they just want to speed things up. Speed the trial up, and we all know why. But because that's not the narrative, we can't say why. When the truth is, all they're doing is trying to get Trump locked up before the trial. I'm sorry, before elections in November. But look at these crazies. That's what people are concerned about. You know, in, in, in polling, when we ask voters, would you like to see these cases reach a verdict before the election? They're resoundingly large majorities of American voters say yes, they would like to have this information about how these cases are going to be disposed in the legal system before they go to vote, but that is just not going to happen. Well, well no, 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 she's doing her due diligence. That, that's what she's actually doing, okay? Again, I want you guys to understand, these people are upset because the judge is refusing to do sloppy work when it comes to an unprecedented case against a former president. When you talk about trying to prosecute and go out the former president. That's not something that you should just be fast tracking, right? That's something where you got to make sure you get it right because the implications, the ramifications of what happens if the former president is convicted, um, again, are, are huge, right? Especially when you're talking about before an election. So to me, it makes sense. It, it would make sense to uh, consider the defense's motions, and to make sure everything is done properly before the case goes to trial, which was not done in New York, right? But that's the one they're screaming about. Oh, that was fair. Totally fair. But again, it doesn't matter which case you look at outside of that. Again, if you look at the one in Georgia, the Georgia Appeals Court is uh, hearing the case to have Fannie Willis dismissed because of the odor of, um, you know, medacity, okay? Because there's conflict of interest, okay? And rightfully so. Order of mendacity. That case is going to get thrown out, by the way. It's already looks like it's going to be canceled or Fannie Willis is going to get removed. They should be hearing it. OK, you have the Supreme Court uh, hearing Trump's immunity arguments, which they should hear. OK, and you have Judge Ian Cannon hearing arguments to have Jack Smith dismissed. They're considering all of the motions of the defense as they should, because that is his legal right. Again, these people are arguing against legal rights for the president. Oh, well, he, he shouldn't be able to uh, have all these motions to defend himself. Consider it, right? This shouldn't be a thing. The judge should just dismiss him off the cuff. Let's not hear people argue uh, for one side or the other. Let's not have open debate. This is what these people are saying. Because they want it rushed. They just want to get to a conviction before the election. More so than anything. And then these are the same people that claim they care about the rule of law. They care about the integrity of the criminal justice system. You know what? This makes a good class on shaping your narrative. You know, all these people went to school, they went to college, and they practice, practice, practice. You practice in high school, practice in college. How to shape your narrative. How to convince the majority of the public about something, about an idea. So I think we should all take a look and learn.
How do you shape the narrative and convince the majority of believing what you're saying? That we need to lock up Donald Trump, that we're doing the right thing. This is this is crazy, but it's working. It works. And that is sad. I think because of social media, we get more people being verbal on life, talking, just like me. My name is Noel, battling a mess, and I'm just gonna talk without having fear of losing my job. And that's the thing, the main reason why I'm doing this, because I don't have that fear anymore that I'm gonna lose my job. So I can say whatever I want. What is that? Is that a face? Is that a face on the on the background? That looked like a face. Wow, it looks like a face in the background. Nice, that threw me off. But in any case, you know what? I'm gonna take lessons, I'm gonna take classes. How do you shape your narrative? How do you make people believe what you want them to believe? Like, this show is great. I'm just putting my opinion out there and it makes sense. It's about facts, putting facts out there. And then believe your eyes. What, what is that thing called? Believe your lying eyes. That what they're doing to Trump is insane. Let's, uh, all right, let's listen to the last few minutes here. System when they're quite literally arguing for the justice system to fast track cases, to do sloppy work in order to get a guy convicted. That's not law and order. What happened to Trump in New York is not law and order. That's why these people come out and say, Republicans are all of a sudden against law and order. No, 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 no. What happened in New York is the opposite of law and order, right? What happened in New York is a banana republic. That's not law and order. So when people lash out and criticize what happened in New York, they're criticizing the fact that that is not law and order. That's not how the the judicial system should work. What you see happening right now with all these other cases, and again, it's not a coincidence that all of this stuff is happening outside of New York, outside of uh, Democrat-controlled districts. You know what I noticed? Trump doesn't really care much. Um, I think there's one truth that Trump is aware of that I don't think he's going to go to jail. And all of this is just to get him not to win the presidency. So he's not really thinking much of it. Whereas regular people, if you go through that craziness, you end up going through the system, you have to wait your verdict in jail and you have to go through hell. But Trump doesn't have to worry about that. And all because all, at the end of the day, after November, everything is going to get dropped, and he's going to get pardoned for everything and for trying so hard. He's going to get pardoned. That's my take. But another thing that I don't like the alternative. Oh, I just noted the screen is small. You know what I don't like? I don't like the alternative because nobody says, or only a few people are saying, you know what? I'm going to vote for the old man. He got my vote. That's not a good alternative. Like, who the hell is not going to vote? You either got Trump or a crazy old man. Check out this clip that I found. Oh, all of a sudden, oh, these motions by Trump, they're being granted, and he's able to make sure everything is actually fair before the trial begins. Again, it's just amazing how that works, right? It should tell you everything you need to know. Right, the black perspective, we're going to leave it there. Right, check out this last clip. Where is it? Here's a report about the, about President Biden that I really think more and more people need to be aware of it. This is looking at the leader of our of the world who's struggling with dementia because the older people get, it doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get any better. Where is the clip? There it is. It only gets worse. My memory is fine. The president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate. A solid meeting with um, with uh, the, uh, the Mitterrand from Germany, I mean, from France looked at me and said, uh, said,
elderly man with a poor memory. I said I'm going to be a president for everybody whether you live in a red state or a green state. I, uh, um, anyway. That alone is enough to get you not to vote for this guy. I can't believe people are still voting for him. Why not? I don't want to. Making Roe v. Word. The best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you, that you uh, um, like to be able to. Anyway, of uh, Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, uh, yeah. Fifty thousand, one hundred fifty-nine thousand billion dollars left. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was gonna put him. Uh, foot, foot, uh, um, uh, um, what am I doing here? One, two. A well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. The, um... An NBC poll taken before any of the most recent moments found more than three-fourths of voters have major or moderate concerns about Biden's mental and physical fitness. That includes 54% of Democrats. Like, I'm sorry, but I can see there's a problem here and we are all aware of it. But I hate the fact that people are pretending that they don't see that there's something wrong with Biden. You know, like, don't believe your lying eyes. And it's going to be a very, very good debate when he faces Trump. I hope Trump takes it easy, you know, young man, and just shows the world who we're dealing with. This is crazy. And like, you didn't even need a narrative for this. All you got to do is look. And it just got a whole lot worse. The Wall Street Journal drops a bombshell on Biden's already fledgling campaign. We're going to see the latest reports on just how badly Biden is slipping behind the scenes. And we're going to venture out as to why now the legacy media is exposing Biden. You are not going to want to miss this. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you stay sane in these insane times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe. I'm going to leave, leave a link to his video because he, he points it out. He made good, obvious observations. Subscribe button. Also, I want you to stop putting off what you know you need to do. If you have not already secured the deed to your home as of yet, you need to click on that link below right now and bad. protect yourself and your loved ones. I will be home today. For the last three and a half years, we've, of course, all had the unfortunate experience of seeing Joe Biden's painfully obvious cognitive decline getting worse and worse right before our very eyes. Some have even called it elder abuse. But now a new report from a major legacy media outlet is sending shockwaves through the campaign. The Wall Street Journal has just exposed even more troubling concerns about Biden behind closed doors that threatens to implode his already fledgling campaign. As it turns out, according to the report, his public brain breaks in confusion, Wait, his already fledgling campaign. As it turns out, according to the report, his public brain breaks in confusion are even worse behind the scenes. Aides and lawmakers speaking anonymously, of course, have confirmed that they are deeply concerned that Biden's cognitive decline is now getting, frankly, dangerous which, of course, blows apart the White House claim that somehow Biden is different behind the scenes than he is bumbling in public. When all is said and done, according to the report, behind the scenes, Biden is even worse. The drugs have worn off and it's not a pretty picture. Here's an excerpt from the article, quote. Oh, and by the way, like I said, all Trump takes it easy against him on a debate and just shows by letting him talk shows that this man got a problem. You don't really have to say much. You don't have to argue or battle much. Just let him talk. When President Biden met with congressional leaders in the West Wing in January to negotiate a Ukraine funding deal, he spoke so softly at times that some participants struggled to hear him. This according to five people familiar with the meeting. He read from notes to make obvious points, pause for extended periods, and sometimes closed his eyes for so long that some in the room wondered whether he had tuned out, which is a nice way of saying he was sleeping. 
And it just gets worse from there. There are numerous reports on numerous occasions of Biden having significant memory slips, of not really knowing where he was, of having personality changes. This makes the country look so bad. Just for the sake of the country, this man got to be voted out. There is no other option. So because Trump is on the other team, we got no choice but to vote for Trump. In other words, the commander in chief has dementia. He's in the process of significant cognitive decline, the significance of which the White House has been able to, at least in part, hide by virtue of pumping him up with drugs when he makes public appearances. But behind the scenes, when the drugs have worn off, there's no hiding it. Now, there are at least two takeaways from this report. This is very interesting. First and foremost, it underscores precisely what we've been predicting on this channel for months now. Biden's cognitive decline is his ultimate Achilles heel. So let's make predictions. In terms of a kind of cognitive decline, I I think that when he goes to debate Donald Trump, he's just going to pause and he's going to freeze while he tries to get his thoughts together. And that'll be perfect to show audience that this man is losing it. So I predict that he's going to pause. He's going to have a, fr a frozen moment where he's just going to stand there not knowing where he's at, not knowing what he's doing, not knowing who he is. So I expect this to happen in the first debate. And if it does happen in the first debate, there is a big possibility that he's going to be switched to somebody else to run for president. So that's my prediction. Now, I am also hoping that Trump doesn't take advantage and just let it play out. Just let the people see who they're voting for. It'll be clear without any words that this man got issues. It's not the economy. It's not inflation. It's not the southern border or the violent crime epidemic or the threat of nuclear war. Make no mistake, those are all bad enough. <laughs> no question. They are at least formally the single most important issues of this campaign. All the polls show that. But there's an underlying subtext to all of those issues, and that's Biden's painfully obvious degenerative senility. This is Biden's ultimate Achilles heel. And the reason for that is very simple. Everything else can change. Everything else can reverse itself. The economy. Oh, another prediction. After he freezes in public in front of everybody, I hope, I hope that Joe Rogan and Elon Musk endorse Donald Trump. Those two heavy hitters, if they were just to say, for the sake of this country, for the sake of humanity, we need to get Trump in. So go vote for Trump. That's all they need to say. So after the debate, I think is when they're going to decide to just throw their hats in and say the man's name in public, that we should vote Trump. Economy can change. His border policies can change, which, of course, even now he's desperately trying to convince the country uh, that his ridiculously pathetic uh, executive order regarding the southern border is working, whatever. Everything else can change. His foreign policy can reverse itself. Inflation can reverse itself. Every single issue can be reversed. It can be at least theoretically rectified, except his senility. His age and senility are the only things in this campaign that have no possibility of reversing them. And that's a true strength that Donald Trump needs to take advantage of. The fact that look at who we're dealing with. Look at who you're voting for. Do you have the balls to vote for this old man? That's the main argument. This is his Achilles heel. This is what has Democrats totally freaking out. They know voters are not going to reelect a president they believe is not cognitively fit for the job. They know that. They know if most voters believe Biden has dementia, he's not getting reelected. It's that simple. Now you know why they're doing everything they possibly can to keep the Robert Herr tapes out of the public arena. They're obviously devastating. Her determined that Biden was too cognitively deficient to stand trial, and the tapes prove it. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to stop arguing with people about how great Trump is. I'm just going to say, give me an argument as to why I should I should vote for Biden. Go ahead, name one reason that I should put my vote on this crazy, dementia-written old man. And so the weaponized DOJ, which is supposed to be independent of the White House, ha-ha, is deliberately hiding them from you. But again, in the end, 
No one's hiding it, anything. Everyone sees that Biden is cognitively degenerating. So that's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is how this report represents a stunning turnaround among the legacy media. Granted, the Wall Street Journal is nowhere near as anti-Trump as MSNBC or CNN or ABC. No question. But they've never been fans of Trump. And they've even been rather sympathetic towards Biden, even on the age issue. If you, again, if you want a sense of the tortured ends the legacy media has been willing to go on Biden's age, just take a look at this headline from the LA Times. I mean, look at that. They actually tried to make the argument that Biden's age was his superpower. I mean, this is a real headline. This is not from the Babylon Bee, gang. This is a real headline from the legacy media outlet, the LA Times. And they're actively trying to gaslight you there into believing that Biden's age is... And there's another thing that because Biden cannot defend himself, he does, he's not capable of doing so. That means the narrative got to be carried by the mainstream media. So after the debate, we got to let the mainstream media bury itself and talk about how great the senile old man is doing. Senility are actually his superpowers. Oh. Note how brazen that is. It's his freaking superpower. Well, with this breaking story this morning from the Wall Street Journal, we're seeing that something is going on here inside the legacy media. They're having a change of heart when it comes to Biden. At least some of them are. They're now openly exposing what's really going on behind closed doors in terms of his worsening condition. We have to ask why. Why is the legacy media, at least in the guise of the Wall Street Journal this morning, suddenly turning on Biden as evidenced by this story? I think we need look no further than this. Is it actually just too soon to know what the impact of this verdict really is on the 2024 presidential outcome? No, it's actually it's soon enough to know that it's not going to significantly alter the results at this moment. Then, in fact, the two presidential debates are going to be more important, that the gains that Trump had made among union members, Hispanics, young African-American men are significant and they're holding, that Biden's gains among middle-aged female suburban voters, those are holding. And basically, this feels more like World War I. That is just simply a ground game. It's a, it's a war of attrition. And there simply isn't that big, dramatic event that most people had expected if Donald Trump was and has been found guilty in all charges. And that's what I need to emphasize. The assumption was 90 days ago that if Donald Trump is found guilty, the bottom would drop out of his support. And that has not happened. He has weakened. People have started to reconsider whether or not they support him. But there's been no dramatic shift. And that in itself is a very big story. So there you have it. The Wall Street Journal's cutting the bait. They're abandoning shit. Pick your metaphor, right? It's now nearly a week after that sham verdict in Manhattan. And you know what? And it may be too late to replace him. But let's see, Vivek, um, he he said that they might switch him. That was his prediction. Let's see if Vivek was right about it. If he's right, Vivek got my vote. Even though he's not running for anything, but Vivek is the man if he's right. And there's been no major movement whatsoever in the polls. But there has been a massive movement among the billionaire class towards Trump ever since the verdict. And there, I would argue, you've got some rationale for this change of heart. Billionaires are starting to flock to their fellow billionaire Trump, realizing that this sham weaponization of the law can be just as easily used against them. Ethan! And so this is a matter of survival for them. And I think the powers that be at the Wall Street Journal are thinking the same way. They're seeing no change whatsoever among voters' attitudes. The sham verdict was a dud. It did nothing to move the needle in terms of public support one way or the other. And at the same time, they're seeing the planetar planetary power brokers, right? The, the billionaires all moving towards Trump. And so it looks like the Wall Street Journal is cutting bait and throwing their lot in with the billionaires. And they're doing it by breaking the code among the legacy media not to expose Biden's dementia and thereby exploit his Achilles heel. So let's just say when it comes to this already crazy campaign, as of this morning, Things just got a whole lot crazier. Here's your opportunity. And you know what? I think it's all about money, right? Because why would anybody throw their money into a failure, into a loss? So all these billionaires and millionaires that are not going with Biden, they just don't see the gain in going with the Democrat. So since he's not going to be president, they need to be on the good side of the new about to be President Trump. So maybe that's why they're doing it. You know, nobody wants to throw good money into a bad situation. So that's what I'm thinking. All right. So I keep saying so a lot. If you're still watching, thank you for watching Verbal on Life. My name is Noel, battling a mess. And 
just want to be verbal about the things happening out there because we got to put our voices out there and let people know what we think, how we think. And that was my take on the Biden Trump situation. I'm trying to fix my casting here. What's the best way to put the camera, put the background and everything. So it's not that easy. It takes time. Been doing this for a while. And shout out to the 10,166 subscribers or 64. Insane. Never in my life did I think I was going to get here. But here we are. So my goal is to get you guys entertained and get you guys informed. Informed as to what's going on out there. And give you another perspective, all right? Making sure you are more awake or aware of what's going on. There's a fly down here. I'm in my basement. New York City. All day, every day. Come see me, 134th Street. You're welcome to come visit. With that, let me go upstairs and see what's going on. Verbal. Orange. Mm -hmm.